In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use a collision detection to create a respawn point. So when we fall off the map and hit the kill floor, we'll actually respawn back in a new position. Let's have a look at this working to begin with. So we start straight in front of this wall here, and if we fall off the map, we hit the invisible floor and respawn at a new point. So let's get underway. Now the first thing I'm going to do is head on up to Edit, and I'm going to head down to the project settings and I'm going to select physics and turn on the auto sync transforms. Now this is going to be important to be able to detect the collisions with the FPS controller. So once I've selected that check mark here, we can then close this panel and we can then go to window and go to package manager. You can also access that by clicking on package manager here. Now what I would like to be able to do is select on project and select my assets and if any and if you haven't done so go and download from the unity store the standard assets for unity 2018 in this package you'll have an fps controller that will be able to move around so import that into your project if you need help with this i'll put a link in the comments below to go to a tutorial on how to download and also set up this fps controller so I'm just going to import all the package just for simplicity. So once you've downloaded, imported and fixed the standard asset pack, you can then head back to your scene. The first thing we need to do now is right mouse click and add a floor. So we're going to add a basic cube and we're going to change its scale to 20, 1 and 20. And let's hit play on this. Now you notice that I had a compile error there. If you click on console, you can see this list of errors. If you have this list of errors, you need to fix the FPS controller. So please have a look at the comments below and go look at the tutorial on FPS controller. Now, once you've fixed the FPS controller errors, when you hit play, you'll notice that we can see the floor and the errors gone from our console list. So click on project and let's get back to work. What we'd like to do now is add our FPS controller to the stage. To do that, we click on standard assets. We go into characters, into first person, prefabs, and then we can add our FPS controller to the stage. What I'm gonna do is lift the FPS controller up. So when it starts, it'll drop into the stage. Let's hit play now. Now I can move around the screen. But as I fall off, you notice that I fall forever. So we want to put a kill floor in so we can respawn back onto the stage. Now we don't actually need the main camera now because we're going to be using the camera inside the FPS controller here. So right mouse click and remove that from your project. Now we've only got one FPS camera. We need to create the kill floor that's going to sit underneath this cube here. So um, once again, I'm going to call this one floor. And then I'm going to create another cube to go underneath this, which is once again a simple cube. And rather than being 20, 20, 20, I'm going to use 40, 1, 40. And then I'm going to use the arrows by selecting the move tool here and move it down on its Y plane underneath. Now you can see up the top here what the Y value is. I'm going to change that to minus 10 and we know that it's 10 units underneath. Now I'd also like to change the color of the ground here. I'm going to turn this green. So I'm going to go back up to the top of my assets, right mouse click create and make a material. I'm going to come in and select a green color and then just press enter. Then I'm going to add that material to the top layer. So let's have a look now. You now see I've got the green grass here and over the side you can still see the brown one here. Now I've fallen far enough so I can see underneath the platform so if there was a player they would know that they've fallen off. But what I want to do is create it so I can respawn back up to the top. So by pushing escape I can stop playing. So the next thing I want to do is actually change cube to kill floor. So I just want to rename this. So I know the object that I'm talking about down here. Currently, kill floor has a mesh render on it, which means you can see it. 
Now I've turned the mesh render off. So when we move to the edge of the platform, we no longer see the kill floor below, but we can still land on it, but you don't see it from the top. Pushing escape, I can then go to my plate. So we have the floor set up and we've got a kill floor set up. I've got my FPS controller in here. And the next thing I need to do is create a respawn point. Now to create a respawn point, all you have to do is right mouse click and go create empty object. Now this empty object I can place wherever I like. And if I want to view and have a look, so I'm starting over here, but I'm going to respawn further back next time. And we need a bit of code to actually detect that we've collided with the floor and to respawn here where this cube is. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we need to do is on the kill floor, we need to come in, we've got a box collider, which is very, very important. And also we're going to add a rigid body. Now a rigid body allows game objects to react to real time physics. It also allows us to detect collisions. It also reacts to things, forces such as gravity and mass and drag. So now that the rigid body has been added to the kill floor, I need to make sure now it doesn't move. To do that, I need to go to constraints and say, don't move on the X, Y, Z and don't rotate so it doesn't start spinning. The other thing I need to do, because it's got a box collider on here, I need to turn it on so it's a trigger. So I'm just going to turn the mesh render back on before we go any further. And we're just going to have a look at this object. So I'm just going to double click it to bring it in focus. And then I'm just going to tilt the screen slightly. You can see a little green line here. This is the box collider. What I would like to do is change the box collider. I'm going to make it a bit bigger on the Y axis going up and down. At the moment it's only one. Let's change this to three. You notice now the box collider is has risen above and below. So it's still three units, but it's one in the middle, one above, one below. I can also move the box collider up. So I could actually just move the box collider one on the Y axis, so it moves it up one unit and now there's no box collider underneath. Having the box collider exposed will ensure that the FPS player hits the box collider. Sometimes when it's set to zero and it's right on the edge, the FPS controller has to go in to the object to touch this. So if the FPS controller collider is sitting up slightly high, they won't connect. So I like to make it a little bit bigger. So because I'm not going to be um, really using this much, I'm just going to change the Y to 3, so it excessively shows the size of the box collider, which is the trigger point. And as the FPS controller falls off, it hits this box collider here and then lands on the surface. So let's create the code that's going to allow this to happen. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to right mouse click and go create, and I'm going to create a C sharp script, and I'm going to call this kill floor. Now, make sure that you don't have any spaces. You can use um, naming conventions like with underscores, etc. Those developer conventions and principles. But I'm just going to call this kill floor or one word. Now, if you haven't installed Microsoft Visual Studio, please do so. And if it's not registering, head on up to Unity, Preferences, go into External Tools, and make sure the external script editor is Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio for PC. It's a very good editor for Unity and took the place of Mono Developer. Once you've done that, you can double click Kill Floor and open up the script. Now, once the script's open, you notice that the name of the script is Kill Floor and the class name is Kill Floor. They must match, otherwise you won't have a class to call. I'm going to remove these lines of code here as we won't need them. And the first thing I need to do is actually create a serialized field. Now a serialized field will create a field in our inspector panel. And then this is going to be linked to a private and then it's going to transform. And then I'm going to have a field, a variable called player and put a semicolon on the end. 
Once again, I'm going to use the same line of code. I'm using square bracket, and then I'll start typing S-E-R, and then I'll push the space bar to select that. Then I just move past this with my arrow keys, push space, private, and then I can go transform with T-R-A, space, and then I can put the next one, which is respawn, underscore point. So I like to use either pothole case, which is all lowercase, etc., or I use a camel case type developer principle. Once I've declared these two variables, this is where the player FPS will be put, and also that respawn empty object that we created will go. So the X, Y, Z positions of those will be stored in these two variables. Then I'll create my own private function. So I'm going to have a and then a function name called on trigger enter. You'll notice that it's automatically put in collider other. So this will store the information if this function is triggered on an object. And what do we want to do if it detects a collision? Well, we want to go player dot transform dot position. And I want that to be equal to where the respawn point is. transform dot position so change the player's position to where the respawn point is that empty game object make sure you have a semicolon on the end and that there's no errors in your program you can check that by hitting the little play here build error is zero but there are four warnings so because there's no build errors I'm not worried about that at the moment so I can then head back to my Unity project. It's asking if I would like to keep running the debugger. I'm going to enable that during this session. Now what I would like to do is attach that kill force script to the kill floor. So I'm just going to select it up here in my inspector. I'm going to move down the bottom and I'm going to move the kill floor across and attach it here. If you'd like to, you can also go add component script and select it out of the list there. You will see now we have a player with none transform. We need to add the FPS controller into player. So therefore player becomes that part of the script. So player, which is here, player.transform position, because I put the FPS controller in here, it's got stored all that information in player. So the FPS controller dot transform position. So move its position to respawn point transform position. So the respawn point is my game object at the moment, which if I double click, you can see where that is. And let's just rename this up in the inspector to respawn. And I'm gonna call it 01, because this could be the first respawn point, and I may have multiple respawn points depending on what they collide with. So when I click back over here, you see the name has been changed within the hierarchy. When I select it, you can see that it's still there. When I go to the kill floor and move down to where the script is, I can now add respawn01 into there. So that concludes the coding part. So let's test it and see if it's working. So I hit play. We've got the script on the kill floor. So let's see if it picks up the collision. It does and drops us back up onto the stage. So there it is there. Let's drop off again and up I come again. So the last thing we need to do is make sure that the kill floor and its mesh render is turned off so we can't see it. You can still see that the kill floor exists and has its parameters. So let's hit play once more. Let's move to the edge. We fall and we respawn again. So I hope you found this tutorial useful on creating a respawn point in Unity. I hope you learned something about rigid bodies, box colliders, um, triggers, how to write a script, how to attach it. And if you did, give the tutorial a like and subscribe. And also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Unity tutorials to help you in your game development.